to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now, take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman, we only have special guests, and today we have Audra with us. She was sent to me through a friend of mine, Libby. So first we want to hear who is Audra, and then we want to go back to the story why Libby introduced us. There must be a reason. Libby always sees the best in the people, but let's listen to Audra first. Welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm Audra Lore of Church. I am CEO of Meaningful Manuscripts, where we help leaders get in front of more readers by producing collaborative book projects. I'm so excited to be here with you today. We have many things in common, right? The love of books, and also the running, but maybe let's go into Libby. First of all, thank you, Libby. How did you know Libby? And why do you think Libby thinks that you and I should get to know each other? First of all, I grew up in New York City. I now live in Virginia, but I grew up in New York. I was the youngest child of a woman who suffered with mental illness. My upbringing in New York was pretty tough. In 1987, I'm dating myself, y'all. So I started working at the Dalton Bookseller down the street from the World Trade Center. I think in 1988, We had a new manager in, her name was Libby, and she had such an amazing dynamic personality. And she really was someone I enjoyed working with. I felt every time I interacted with her, I learned something. And that was exciting for me, especially with my background. I remember one day Libby called me in the office and I thought I was in trouble. Like, what did I do? The manager just called you in the office. <laughs> and she offered me a promotion. Wonderful. What did you do? What do you think you did? I'm going to tell you, for this 18-year-old Girl, I was just a few weeks from being homeless. I had just gotten my first apartment a few weeks before I got the job. Having her speak so positively into my life at a time when there was no one around me doing that, I can't tell you what that meant. We, When we spoke recently, she said, but Audra, you were such a hard worker. I, I loved books. As a homeless teenager, I would read. And I would imagine the life of the heroines that I would read about. And I had a fascination with the Holocaust for whatever reason. I would read a lot of books of young girls who struggled and overcame because I guess I identified with that. Probably. And it would give me hope mm -hmm. working in the bookstore and having access to all these books. <laughs> was heaven. It sounds like a magic. I had such a respect for books that it made me absolutely love every minute of my job. When Libby offered me the promotion and just spoke so much positivity into this former homeless girl who felt abandoned and unloved and unseen. I, I felt when she looked at me, she saw me. And that made me work even harder and just love my time. My mom was a reader. And so I think that's something all of me and my sisters, I'm the youngest of three, we got from her. As my mom got older and her mental illness worsened, she moved around a lot, a lot. <laughs> I was transferred out of public school 13 times from kindergarten to seventh grade. We would just move whenever the wind blew. But for my sisters and I, whenever we moved to a new neighborhood, we would scout around, look for the library. And we knew once we found the library, we were home. By the time my mom really spiraled out of control and my sisters were older, and it's just she and I, now we're sleeping on the subways, books were my immediate gravitation. You know, they, they were my comfort, I mm -hmm. guess. You know, even though life was really crazy, books to me is what kept me grounded. I'm so thankful now, here we are decades later, that I'm able to work and do this full time as an entrepreneur and help authors get their books published. I just feel like my life has gone full circle and it's just been an amazing, amazing ride. <laughs> I want to be part of that ride. You're living on the subway. We don't, yeah. you know, this is amazing and who the person you are. And for the listen, she looks beautiful, with beautiful glasses. Everything looks picture perfect. And now you're helping people publish yeah. their books. And I, and I fell into that by accident. One of the things I, I share, and for the listeners, please, 
If you don't take anything else from this session, understand that whatever you dream can happen. If there's people around you telling you it's impossible, tune them out. Because people told me all my life, pretty much you have to you you have to play the hand you were dealt. And I'm like, well, I don't like these cards. <laughs> and I'm gonna get a new deck. I don't like these cards. They tell me I was hallucinating and that couldn't happen. I remember when I was homeless, I would have this same dream that now I understand I was manifesting. But then I didn't understand. I was just the same dream. And I would imagine myself in a car driving down the Belt Parkway, <laughs> wind blowing through my hair, driving up to the steps of this beautiful house. And I would hear my heels clicking on the concrete. Click, 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 up. click. I would hear it going up the steps. I would, you know, hear the, the key turning in the door. And I would imagine myself placing my keys on the mantle and looking at myself in the mirror <gasps> as I walked to my own home. And I would repeat, I would rinse and repeat that same dream over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I would have on a suit, Different makeup, different hair, <laughs> but it was always the same dream, right? In 2006, that dream actually came true. I bought my first home in Virginia. <gasps> I was just filled with so much emotion that what 14 and 15-year-old Audra dreamed of actually did come true. And not only did it come true, I had an MBA. I had a six-figure job. I had a great life. I traveled. I just, so many people told me it wasn't possible. I think we need to look at the word differently because impossible means I am possible, right? If you write it out differently. Congratulations. Such a strong person. And do you think the books were helping you out to be so strong or what, what was helping you? The books helped me dream. So there was nothing in my life during that time that told me I could have what I wanted. There was nothing visible, mm -hmm. but I believed it. Because I was able to, as I was reading the stories, I could almost visualize their journey and I could, I could see their success and I could see how they got to the finish line. If they could do it, why couldn't I? You know, which is why I guess autobiographies were more of my, my thing. Okay. You know, cause these were real people. This mm -hmm. wasn't imaginary. These were real people. Everything around me told me I couldn't have it. Even everything around me told me that you're trying to go after something that no one else in your family has done or no one else that you know has done. What I read in the books told me I could do it. It is mm -hmm. possible for me too. There's nothing different about me. Yep. And so that kept me going. Wow. And I went to college, milked every moment out of being a student. <laughs> I was president of the accounting society, treasurer of student government. <laughs> I probably won. I think I won every award at the honors thing. I'm only except for one. I enjoyed every moment. Mm -hmm. Because I felt every class I took was getting me closer to my goal because mm -hmm. I believed that education yeah. was truly what I needed to make a change. Before we move on to, you know, the real good stuff, do you remember, <laughs> everything is so cool. Do you remember any books that stood out for you? Alicia Applegate German. It was involving the Holocaust. She was a young girl and it just tracked her story through it. Yeah, that's it. Alicia, my story is the name of it. I probably read that book about four or five times, <laughs> but it just encouraged me so much reading this story and, and feeling the pain. And I was living the pain I was reading about, though it was different, I was still living it because I felt I lost my family. I had four aunts and a grandmother in Brooklyn and none of them took me in. I was a nerdy student. I was like the nerd. I was the nerd, <laughs> the poster child for her, <laughs> for nerdiness was me. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like I was, I was hanging out or anything like that. I went to church and I went to school and I went to the library. That was my life. Mm -hmm. I even went from seventh grade to ninth grade. You know, I didn't go to eighth grade. I, I was very studious, very nerdy, and they didn't take me in. And I felt very abandoned, unloved actually unworthy of love. When I was reading her story, Alicia, it made me, I, I connected to her feelings of loneliness and emptiness and abandonment and uncertainty. You know, at a young age, when your future was so uncertain, it really can be paralyzing to see how she navigated to get through it all and to have a normal life at the end that con I connected with that because I used to say, all I want is a normal life, just a normal life. That's it. That book, Alicia, mm -hmm. my story is one of the ones that stands out to me when I think back to that time. Well, it has starts with an A and you have an A for your first name. <laughs> right. I think like the A, right. The A player, the A student. So here we are with all the A's. Okay. So you have a bachelor's and an MBA. And now what do you do? I, I went on to complete my bachelor's and my MBA. And 
began working in a corporate space as a financial analyst, and I loved it. I was very, numbers came very easy for me. When I was 16, riding the subway, I remember looking through the New York Times and trying to imagine what kind of job would I have? Because I was thinking of the job I needed to complete this dream. And so as I went through it and I looked through the first page, had all the accounting jobs and I saw mm-hmm. the money they were paying. I went to my guidance counselor in school and said, I want to change my major from nursing to bookkeeping. And that's what I, I did that in high school. From there on, when I went to college, majored in accounting, and I loved every moment of it. Another A, we have to interrupt. Another A, isn't that funny? You need to focus on that letter A. And it's funny you say that. I have three grandbabies, and all of their first names start with A. See, sometimes we need to pay attention to that. So, yes, it's it's been an interesting journey. But for me, going to college kicked it off. There's a professor that I really... I've I've sent him messages and I'm really thankful. One thing I've realized along this journey, there was a time when I felt I was totally by myself. Like no one ever helped me. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. And a professor helped me realize that one day. I want you to stop saying no one helped you because someone helped you. Mm -hmm. Sit down and think about the moments and the moments that mattered. And I reflected back to in 1993, I had a niece who was killed at the age of six. In 1991, and it devastated me, just Mm -hmm. absolutely devastated me. To honor my niece, I started going to college in 1992. I said, I want my niece to always look at me and be proud. I went to school that spring semester and didn't take into consideration the legal court case that was going to follow and how that was going to affect me academically. I withdrew, didn't complete my classes, and one of them, I actually got an F, and the professor was so upset because I was doing so well. Two years later, I'm walking through downtown Brooklyn and I hear my name and it was this professor. He said, I recognized you. He said, do you know how how much it hurt me to give you that grade? Because you were running an A and then you just disappeared. He was murdered and it was a unfortunately a publicized case. When I mentioned the details, he knew what I was talking about. He said, show up to the school on Monday or write a letter and we'll petition the board to see if we can have these taken off your records. I want you to return. I wrote the letter. I attached all the newspaper articles, all the information about the case and how awful it was and had my grades to prove how they were going before the court case. They took all those records. They are completely off of my record. I enrolled back in school spring of 1994, and which is why I just appreciated every moment of being there. I sent him a message to say, thank you for stopping to just call my name. Do you know how many teachers or professors see former students and go, oh, that's a former student, and they keep walking? But he saw me, and he stopped, and he had concern, and then followed through with it, helped me get back in school, and it's totally changed my life. Sometimes we think we're alone, but there are people that are planted along our journey to help get us to the finish line. And so that's what I focus on, not the people who didn't, but the people who did loving and and relishing in those moments Mm -hmm. because that's truly what this life is all about. And I'm wondering, what is his name with an A? (laughs) (laughs) You know, it is not. His last name is Carol, Professor Carol. And it's so funny because now here we're decades later. He's like, why do you still call me Professor Carol? You can call me Stan. I'm like, because it's just the respect. (laughs) So I think you need to rename him. He's an angel. There we have the A. Yes. And and I've been blessed with many angels in my life. And I believe Libby was one of them as well. She Mm -hmm. just didn't realize at the time. She's yeah. helping many people. I know that. What a story. What are you taking away from Audra? Impressive. I am possible. So if you have this mantra, it's impossible. It will not work. If you have the mantra, I am possible. It will work. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Chime in. There's something for everybody. Listening to fantastic stories like Audra. Anybody can stand up, lean in, and make the dreams become true. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. And Take It From The Iron Woman is also a book. It actually started out as the book Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Don't miss out. Thank you for your support. Mm-hmm.